Hey guys, this is Mark. So far we have talked about password recovery by user, which is a use case that applies when user simply cannot log in, they forgot their password and uh, they just need to get into the application. However, there is also a use case when they logged in and they just want to change the password once they are in the application. And typically this uh, workflow includes uh, verification of their existing password, just in case if someone got a hold of the device or is in front of their screen and that it's not password protected, you want to verify that whenever password is being changed, that the old password is still known and can be verified. So this is what we will be talking about in this video. And uh, uh, I titled, titled it password change API, but it also includes uh, a few additional APIs. One of them will be verifying existing password for uh, the currently logged in user. And the other API is updating the user. And they're all tightly related. Therefore, I thought that it would be better just to put it all together in one video to demonstrate the entire use case rather than splitting them up into individual videos and then where one would refer to another and uh, it would be harder to understand. So uh, the use case that we are reviewing is when user wants to change their password and they are logged in. So they supposedly still know their existing password. Password change would be a secure function, right? So you, we just do not want a public API where anybody can change password for uh, via the API. It needs to run securely in a controlled environment. And that controlled environment is cloud code. And in fact, specifically, the API to verify the password for the currently logged in user is not something that can be invoked over the internet. That API can be used only from within cloud code. And cloud code in backendless could be API services, it can be uh, an API event handler, it could be a timer. There are different types of those uh, of the ways to run cloud code. I will not bore you with the details. There is going to be a separate uh, training course just for the cloud code. But for now, we're going to look into it because it really highlights uh, the, the, how to create API services and use that API in an API service. So what is cloud co code? And I just mentioned an API service is essentially just logic that runs in backendless, backendless server-side environment, and it can be implemented either with code or without code. If you are going to use code, it can be either Java or Node.js, JavaScript, and you can use our SDKs in that code, or you can create those APIs with codeless without uh, any programming language using just visual programming uh, that, uh, that is available in Backendless. So uh, let me switch to cloud code and we'll start creating that API service that will title password change. So here in cloud code, I'm going to create a new API service, switch to codeless here, and let's uh, call that, let's call it user service, just because one API may contain multiple operations. There will be one operation that we'll create for this specific demo, and uh, let's call it change password. In here, the, this will be uh, essentially just a method that will be invoked. And the method, if you're not familiar with this uh, concept, it is an endpoint. It's something that you can call over the internet as far as uh, a, a URL in the most basic terms. So a parameter is an argument that we'll be sending in into that method. That parameter, one of the parameters is going to be current password. And the parameter type is going to be a string. And the other parameter is going to be new password, which is also a string. And that method will be returning data back to us, which is going to be an updated uh, user object. So here it's going to be data object of type users, just because it will be a record from the database from the users table. So that's the definition of our API method. Let's click Save. And Backendless creates a placeholder for our API, which we can edit with a codeless editor. So click Edit. And in here, we will start adding our logic to, uh, to implement this functionality. So first of all, we want to verify that the current password uh, for the currently logged in user is valid. It is indeed correct. 
And for this, let's add the if statement. And in here, for this if statement, we need to do the actual verification. So the ver verification, if the current password for the currently logged in user will be in the user's API section. And it is, let me find it, right here at the very bottom, verify current user password connected to this. And then the password that we need to provide is going to be this block, which is one of the arguments that we received uh, in this API method connected here. This block returns true if the password is indeed correct. And otherwise it will return false. Uh, you might be wondering why there is such a block. Why can you just like query the database? Well, for the reason that the passwords in backendless for the users are not stored in clear text. They are encrypted and they're salted. There is just all kinds of stuff happens where you cannot just see what the original password was. It has to go through encryption. As a result, the process of making sure that this password is indeed what we have in the database does require an API call, which is implemented in this block. So here, if the password is correct, that what we want to do is we want to obtain the actual user object that is currently logged in. How do we do this? Well, first of all, let's create a variable that will contain that user object. Let's call it user, and we'll set this variable to the following block, get current user. And then get current user will return the actual user object with all of the properties. And uh, now that we have this user object, we can update that user object with the new password. How do we do this? Well, if we go to object, set property in, and we will be setting that property in the user object in the variable. And the property that we will be updating is password. Connect this argument. And this will update the object, but it's still in memory. We still need to save it to the database. Okay. Why is this password? Well, first of all, because it makes sense. Second of all, because the name of the column in the user's table that contains passwords is password. So we are technically updating a property in the user object. Similarly, if you need to update any other property, you will be doing exactly the same thing, just assigning a value to the user object property and that gets updated, but it is not saved in the database yet. How do we save it to the database? There is a separate block for this in the user's API. You will see update user. So this update user block flushes that user object and let's connect it first right here. So it takes this user object now with the updated password and it just saves it to the database. In here, if you select this checkbox, it returns the actually updated user object. So we'll put it right here. So the way it is right now, it's almost there, but not quite. Because here, if we were to leave it as is, what's going to happen is that if this verify current user password is actually false, that means none of this will happen and we will still be updating user. And in fact, this user variable will, will not even be defined. So what we want to do is we want to deal with the scenario when if the password is not correct. And for this, let's add else right here. So I click the gear icon and I connected else to my if, and now we have this else block. So if the password is not correct, let's throw an error. And in the exceptions, there is this throw error block connected right here. So if the password is not correct, we throw an error and we will say password is incorrect. Now this logic is complete. So we click deploy model right here and it takes this logic and now it deploys it to the backendless cloud servers. And we have this API that is ready to go that we can use. Let's use the API. Then we will come back to this logic and review it one more time. Let's go back to API services. This is our change password method. And in order to invoke this method, we need to have currently logged in user. If we were to run this logic now, things will not work because there is no currently logged in user. So in order to simulate user login, if you go to headers, you can, you see this link login to impersonate a user, click this. And I will be using iron man at marvel 
gmail.com and the password is I believe this is the password click login yes the password was correct and you will see what this password is because now that we have the user logged in this is the user token that represents this session if we click on parameters now we can create the actual body for this request and the body is what goes out into the api call so if you click on this it gets replicated here the current password is iron is cool because this is iron then and um the, the new password is let's say it's not going to be very secure so we'll do password one two three and in here if we click invoke our logic gets executed and what we get back is the actually updated user object so this user object that's our rmn now has the updated password which will be password one two three and that's it so in fact now if we go back to the ui and run uh, the login then we will have to use the new password i will not demonstrate it it will definitely work the point of this video is to show you this logic that we have put together let's review it one more time so we have currently logged in user for that user we verify if the password argument which is the current password is valid if it is valid then we get that user object using this block we update the password property with the new password and then we update that user save it to the database so this update user block takes this user object now it has updated password and saves it to the database and returns the updated user object that's it so a couple of things that we can do now is if we go back and try to invoke it with let's say a wrong password so the current password we said it was password one two three uh how about we just type in password so let's try invoking it okay so we got not existing user token and that means that the user token that we had before it is not valid it got invalidated and because it got invalidated let's click log out and click login to impersonate user iron man at marvel.com password one two three click login and in here we're using wrong password so let's invoke it and see we got the error password is incorrect which is the error coming from our logic right from here because the verification of the current password did not work however if we change it to password one two three and return the password to iron is cool click invoke and now the user got updated this is it and uh, i know there are a lot of different little things little apis that i put it all together however this use case is fairly complete and now you know how to update a password for the currently for a user who is logged in thank you for watching this video and as always happy code discovery